Uh, good morning once again. Uh, like I said, I am uh, Yahaya Umar Isa from the Department of Plant Science and Biotechnology, and I shall be taking you the plant segment of uh, the general biology with the course code Bio One Two Two together with other two lecturers. And this is your lecture note for week six and uh, week five and six. So today we shall be looking at uh, the other uh, segment of the classification of plants based on the presence or absence of seed. You know, we said in the, in the last week we said uh, plants based on the presence or absence of seed are divided into two divisions. We have the cryptogamia and we have the phenogamia, or the spermatophyte. And we said the uh, Cryptogamia are divided into three divisions. We have the uh, Talophyta, we have the Pryophyta, and we have the uh, Cheridophyta. So today, for this week, we shall be looking at uh, the other uh, uh, segment of the classification, which is the Phenogamia or Spermatophyte, that is the seed-bearing uh, plant. And like we said, the seed-bearing plants are divided into two based on the uh, where the uh, seed are in this plant. We have other plants in which the seed are naked and we have others in which the seed are enclosed in a sack. So based on these divisions we have uh, a gymnosperms and uh, angiosperm. So for the spermatophyte in general, these are seed producing tracheophyte and we said tracheophyte these are plants that uh, have vascular bundles or vascular tissues and we said the vascular tissues are the what the transport tissues in plants which are the xylem which is responsible for the transportation of water and we have the phloem which is responsible for the transportation of uh, the already uh, manufactured substance to where they are going to be utilized within the plant body. So for the purpose of reproduction, they bear flowers or cones. They show heteromorphic alternation of generation in which sporophyte is dominant first and the gametophyte is reduced. The gametophyte is totally dependent on the sporophyte for nutrition. In phenerogams or phenerogamia, Multicellular seed is formed with an embryo, and this plant atresia with a well developed uh, sporophyte that has complex vascular tissues. So, the subkingdom of uh, the subkingdom spermatophyta, like we said, is divided into two divisions or two classes the gymnosperm and the angiosperm. And the gymnosperm is uh, uh, are the naked seeded plant because we said the spermatophyte these are seed producing plants however some plants their seeds are naked while others their seeds are enclosed so those ones in which their seeds are naked are regarded as uh, the gymnosperm or the naked seeded plant and the seeds remain what exposed while the other one is the angiosperms and the angiosperms are enclosed seeded ones. These are plants that have an enclosed seed. The seeds are covered. The seeds remain inside the what? Inside the fruit. So gymnosperms. Gymnosperms uh, produce flowers and seeds, but do not bear any fruit. Once they were well spread around the world, they were once spread around the world, but at the present, or at the present time, their number is becoming very limited. That is, uh, most of the species of uh, gymnosperms have gone into extinction because the total number of species of gymnosperms in the whole world is only 27, according to the recent uh, literature. So, here are the characteristics or features of uh, uh, gymnosperms. So, these are plants with naked seed, they do not bear flowers. Although they have true root stems and uh, leaves, so uh, instead of having root, they have 
I mean, instead of having a rhizoid, as in uh, the talophyte, the bryophyte, and the thriophyte, these plants have what? They have true root, and they have, the plant body is differentiated into a uh, segment, unlike the uh, bryophyte and thriophyte, where we said the plant body is, is uh, undifferentiated into the true root, stem, and uh, uh, leaves. But in the case of gymnosperm, they have a true root, stems, and leaves. And they are vascular green plant. That is, they are green plants that possess, uh, possess vascular bundles or vascular tissues, which are the xylem and the phloem. And the third one is that uh, the seeds are born on special structure known as uh, corn. The second subdivision is the angiosperm. Like we said, these are phenorogams, which are ovary and fruit. They also bear seed, but their seeds are enclosed in the fruit. For example, if you want to see the seed of a mango, you have to what? You have to first of all get the fruit, split it before you uh, see the seed inside. So these are fruit bearing uh, flowering plants. Apart from seed, they also bear fruit. And here are some of the crustaceans of uh, angiosperm. They are the most complex green flowering plants. They are the most advanced green flowering plants. And they are vascular plants. We said vascular plants are plants that have what? Vascular tissues or vascular bundles. The third one is that uh, they have well-developed and complete flowers. Uh, flowers are well-developed and are complete. And they are seed plants with seed enclosed in the fruit. Like I said, they bear seed. But the difference between uh, angiosperm and uh, the gymnosperm is that uh, they both bear seed, but their seed, the seed of angiosperm is enclosed in the fruit, while the seed of uh, gymnosperm is exposed. And uh, the last uh, characteristic is that uh, the Amelie uh, terracia plant you cannot find an, a gymna, an angiosperm growing in aquatic situation. What are the importance of angiosperm? Saying that uh, they are the advanced uh, uh, plant on earth, so what are their importance? So, one of the importance is that uh, uh, angiosperms can grow as big as trees, like the mango. The mango is as is, is, is if you look at the mango tree, it's a very very big one. So the tree can provide animals with uh, both food and shelter. Some animal normally live on the tree. So the tree there is their shelter. The tree there is their home. And some animals do consume from the fruit of these uh, uh, trees. For example, bats. Bats normally consume from uh, uh, this fruit of a uh, of fruit of a uh, of a mango or mango fruit. Another one is that uh, angiosperm serve as a home for monkeys. You know, monkeys normally live on top of trees, so the trees there serve as a home for monkeys and other large mammals. Oh, you know, mammals. You know, mammals are those animals that bear their young ones alive. So as well as birds, reptiles, and uh, uh, arthropods. And another one is that uh, angiosperm serve as a home for insects and spiders. And lastly, angiosperm are sources, uh, sources of food. And then for the fruit, serve as a fruit, uh, as, 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 as a food to man and other uh, animals. Timber too. You know, we also get timber from these big trees. Some trees or some uh, plants are medicinal curing different ailments and other useful products such as uh, oil, gums, and spices. Now, angiosperm is also divided into two. You know, we said these are plants that have a uh, seed enclosed in the fruit. We have some uh, angiosperm in which their seed leaf is one. And we have those in which their seed leaves, seed leaf, is more than one. 
That's why angiosperms is divided into two. We have the monocotyledon and we have the dicotyledon. Now, the monocotyledon. The monocotyledon bears seed, which have only one seed leaf, or cotyledon. Another one is that uh, the vascular boundaries of the stem are scattered. The boundaries, the vascular tissues, are not well arranged, rather they are scattered. And their leaves have veins. The veins on the leaves are running parallel to one another. Just they have a straight line, uh, a straight veins, not in a network uh, 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 situation, but they are what the veins are parallel. They are not intersecting with one another. And lastly, they have a fibrous root system. Their root systems are what are fibroid. They are scattered. They are not tap root. The roots are not what straight deep into the soil. No, it is widely spread. The second one is the uh, dicotyledon, which is the second division of uh, uh, angiosperm. I would say the dicotyledonous plant, the bear seed, which have two seed leaves of cotyledon. Instead of one, as in mono, here they have two seed leaves of cotyledons. Secondly, is that uh, the vascular boundaries of each stem are arranged. You know, in the case of uh, monocotyledon, we say they are what they are scattered. Here, they are well arranged in a regular uh, pattern. And another characteristic is that uh, their leaves have uh, veins arranged in a branch network. While in the uh, monocotyledon, we say they are what they are parallel to each other. Here, they are what they are branched. And the last one is that uh, they have a taproot system. Well, in the case of monocotyledon, we say monocotyledon have a what uh, fibrous root system. While the dicotyledons they have what uh, tap root system. And a typical example of a uh, monocotyledon is the, the 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 maize plant. If you look at a typical maize, if you look at the root, is what is a fibrous root system. And if you look at the leaves, they have a parallel uh, veins not network or not uh, a branch network while a typical example of uh, a dicotyledon is the mango 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 tree the mango tree is a typical example of a uh, uh, dicotyledon thank you so much see you next time